So this is going to start the nervous system. So in the nervous system, you're going to have three basic structures um, of neural cells. You've got the dendrites, which will receive electrical signals. The soma of the cells, which will contain the nucleus, organelles, endoplasmic reticulum, and ribosomes. And then the axon, which takes electrical signals away. Um, a for away, A for axon. This is where the uh, action potential will travel. Um, you also have nodes of Ranvier. So basically, the way this works is that um, you will have uh, little, um, essentially, humps. And basically, this is called saltatory conduction, where uh, the electrical signal is able to jump through the nodes of Ranvier and produce an action potential a lot quicker than, you know, as if there were no uh, nodes of Ranvier. Um, <clears throat> Around the axon, you in mammals at least, most mammals have an insulation of myelin sheath, uh, which are produced by swan cells and oligodendrocytes. <clears throat> Other cells in the neural system are glial cells. So one type is astrocyte, which is basically the blood-brain barrier. Um, another type is ependymal, which produces the cerebrospinal fluid, which is the shock absorber in the spine. Um, and then microglial will break down waste, uh, kind of similar to uh, a macrophage, but not necessarily. Um, and microglial also makes sure there's no like uh, pathogens in um, the neural system, like in the spine. So the next is the really key concept of the neural si nerv nervous system, which is going to be the action potential. Um, so this is kind of a diagram of uh, an axon, uh, pre- and postsynaptic uh, clefts. So you've got, essentially what happens is a depolarization. Um, also, something you really want to know is that um, all of the graphs that are produced on the MCAT and for PrEP, um, they're all respective to the inner membrane. So usually the way a graph will work is going to be something kind of like that, and then it'll hit a peak, it'll go down, and then it'll stabilize. So, um, this whole depolarization part really means influx of sodium, which is normally outside the cell, into the cell. When this happens, your uh, millivolts of um, electricity will go up. Um, once you basically reach a peak, you'll have the action potential which will occur. Um, and then you'll have uh, depolarization of the inner membrane, which means uh, potassium starts to leave. Uh, and then you'll overshoot the action potential and get a uh, hyperpolarization. This is usually where you have a refractory period. Um, in order to re-stabilize this membrane, you're going to use ATP and uh, potassium and sodium pumps. And basically, this is a uh, two to three ratio in order to make sure that uh, more sodium is pumped out than uh, more sodium, more positive ions are pumped out than are uh, put into the cell. So basically, uh, re-establishment of sodium out and um, potassium in. Um, usually, whenever you have, uh, right here, so depolarization, sodium out of the cell, repolarization, potassium out of the cell, um, and hyperpolarization overshoot. <coughs> Calcium is really big, so uh, back in the endocrine system, the calcium was used um, for, uh, you had calcitonin and calcium. In this case, in the nervous system, calcium uh, triggers the in influx of calcium into the cell, the, ner uh, the neural axon. You have exocytosis of neurotransmitters, and this part right here is pure electricity. I mean, there's chemicals inside and out, but it's mainly electricity. Here, this is a chemical signal. So, for example, acetylcholine will go from, uh, will be released out of this vesicle to the next um, cleft, where it will receive a signal, and then the um, whole process starts again. So, basically, the uh, electrical and chemical interplays action potential will cause uh, influx of calcium, which will cause an exocytosis of neurotransmitters. And then the neurotransmitters will cross the synaptic cleft in order to bind to ion-gated channels and G-protein complexes. So this is basically right here a structure of the nervous system. 
the nervous system is divided into part one, which is uh, central, and part two, which is peripheral. Um, the central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. Um, and this is basically, if you know what axial skeleton is, this is going to be that spinal cord, spinal column, um, and then you have uh, the head, which is the brain. The peripheral, peripheral nerves, and you've got two types of peripheral nerves, um, well, two types of the peripheral nervous system. Somatic, which is basically your voluntary muscles, and then autonomic, which is involuntary muscles. Um, somatic, you can have efferent and afferent, so afferent is sensory, and uh, the way you can remember is that afferent ascends the spinal column to go to the brain. Um, so when you, you know, touch something, you'll get that signal that goes up your spinal column to the brain. Efferent is exit, so you're getting the message from your brain to one of your muscles. Then you've got the autonomic nervous system, um, and that is broken up into sympathetic and parasympathetic. Um, these are essentially antagonists. So sympathetic is sympathy for emergency situations such as stressfulness. So example is raising, uh, releasing epinephrine, um, increasing adrenaline levels, uh, increasing the heart rate. This is a flight or fight, flight or fight responses. So um, dilation of pupils. Parasympathetic is actually it works to decrease the sympathetic uh, response. So parasympathetic is more for like rest and digest. Um, you know, it'll cut down blood pressure, it'll cut down epinephrine in order to um, gain nutrients from cells. This is why you're not really supposed to go work out after you eat, because while you're eating, you're digesting and the parasympathetic nervous system's on, um, you, it'll really screw up your balance if you, can't, if you have uh, both going on at the same time when one shouldn't be happening.